So let's come back to learning from what was revealed to Ellen White, what she wrote about regarding the Holy Flesh Doctrine, and let's reconsider how to apply it in our day. Um, we can learn much about this. Uh, so, Second Selected Messages, page 33, paragraph 4. Again and again in the progress of our work, fanatical movements have arisen. And when the matter was presented before me, I have had to bear a message similar to the message I am bearing to my brethren in Indiana. I have been instructed by the Lord that this movement in Indiana is of the same character as have been the movements in years past. In your religious meetings, there have been exercises similar to those I have witnessed in connection with those movements in the past. So this is a similar um, way that this was done, this fanaticism, but it's also of the same character. So there's exercises that are similar, and it's also of the same character. Two different things that we want to watch for. Then, in the period of disappointment, after the passing of the time in 1844, fanaticism in various forms arose. Some held that the resurrection of the righteous dead had already taken place. I was sent to bear a message to those believing this. As I am now bearing a message to you, they declared that they were perfected, that body, soul, and spirit were holy. They made demonstrations similar to those you have made and confused their own minds and the minds of others by their wonderful suppositions. Yet these persons were our beloved brethren and we were longing to help them. So they believed a false teaching. They believed they were perfected. Uh, remember that one of the quotes we read in an earlier presentation talked about our need to protect our body, soul, and spirit. They believed these things were holy. Their minds became confused, and other minds became confused. Yet, they were our beloved brethren, and we were longing to help them. I went into their meetings. There was much excitement with noise and confusion. One could not tell what was piped or what was harped. Some appearing to be in vision and fell to the floor. Others were jumping, dancing, and shouting. They declared that as their flesh was purified, they were ready for translation. This they repeated again and again. I bore my testimony in the name of the Lord placing his rebuke upon these manifestations. So notice again that there's two things here. There's noise. So these are some principles that Ellen White taught about the holy flesh apostasy. Number one, I have been instructed by the Lord that this movement in Indiana is of the same character as have been the movements in years past. This is in reference to October 22, 1844, of the same character. Number two, they declared that they were perfected, that body, soul, and spirit were holy. So remember they taught, they had a false teaching about what they called holy flesh, uh, about perfectionism, and about what I would call sinless perfectionism. Number three, there was much excitement with noise and confusion. So there was an outer experience of excitement. There was outer noise. There was inner confusion. Some would have said there was also outer confusion. Number four, one could t not tell what was piped or what was harped. So on to observing on the outside, they were unable to tell what the instruments were that were being played or which instrument was being played. So questions that I found that are helpful to ask to discern today if a movement is or isn't fanaticism. So what is the character of the movement? What is 
or are the patterns? Now remember, we're not given permission by Jesus to point fingers at people and say that they have character flaws or that their motives are wrong or whatever. We can't really discern that, but we can observe what is the character or the patterns uh, of a movement or, or of teachings. Number two, what are the false teachings? Are they teaching holy flesh? Are they teaching perfectionism? Are they teaching sinless perfectionism? Or are they teaching the opposite of that? Either way is a false teaching. Number three, is there excitement or noise about the teachings? It's okay to be excited about truth and learning about God, but um, we need to ask ourselves this question as part of observing the pattern. Number four, do the teachings bring confusion? Confusion is part of Babylon. Um, is truth being presented in a way that brings confusion? And backing up to number three, sometimes there thing, this can be done in an opposite way. No noise, no music, no excitement, the opposite of that. Uh, that's not right either. So you see how there can be polarity. So I find it interesting as we consider these questions to ask that what we find today is that the powers of darkness have driven polarities on opposite sides of either side, whether it's liberal or conservative. So, let's look at number five. Question to ask is, can you tell what is being presented? What are the instruments that are being played? See, one of the polarities is that on the conservative side, there may not be any music. Or if there is, they've taken everything that's natural rhythm out of the song. and Instead, what's being played is truth, biblical truth, and teachings. So, what are the instruments being played? And the instruments here are not music, okay? Although they could be music, depending on which side of the polarities are being driven to either extreme. Number six, remember, Ellen White did not say that the instruments played were wrong, not even drums, really. She did say that what was wrong was the way or the manner the instruments were being played. We can learn from this. Are the instruments of truth in the Bible bringing confusion by the manner they are used? We have today several extremes with the polarities around the holy flesh apostasy. One is, oh no, you can never use drums because drums were one of the instruments that Ellen White mentioned uh, in the holy flesh doctrine. It was one of the things that happened in Indiana. They don't look at the fact that she was saying it was the way the instruments were played. But we have the opposite thing happening also, where we have people who don't want to hear any truth or Bible prophecy because of the manner that truth or Bible prophecy has been done and the critical spirit about how it's been done to, to extremes two extremes on either side. So this shaking is really truly, like Ellen White predicted, shaking everything that can be shaken. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. That what is really the pure truth and the pure relationship with Jesus will remain.